Welcome back to the Camilla Tomney Show. Now, on the 4th of May, may the 4th be with you, people across England will be going to the polls for the local elections. Over 8,000 council seats will be up for grabs. And to talk me through what we can expect, I'm joined by Lord Robert Hayward, the Tory peer, former MP and pollster. And I'm also joined by Scarlett Maguire, former communications advisor to Gordon Brown and Tony Blair. What a great panel to have. <laughs> Can I call you wise owls? I think I can. I think I can. Now, look, I had Greg hands on earlier. Bless him, Robert. He didn't want to advertise the launch of the party's election campaign. It's all looking a bit dodgy. Are you going to lose a thousand of these eight thousand? Well, I'm going to look at it as an analyst rather than as a spokesman. Good for idea. The Tory party. Love that. Yeah. But yes, there's no question the Tories are going to lose seats. They had through. They have had through the period of the Conservative government, quite an extraordinary run of local government election successes. So that they actually have more seats now, with the exception of 2019 when they lost seats, but they have more seats now than any governing parties had in decades and decades and right. decades. So it's theirs so to lose. They're there to lose, and they are defending more seats than the Labour Party and the Lib Dems put together. OK, but you mentioned the Lib Dems. I mean, I might have cruelly called them lesser spotted. I know Ed Davies been like, you know, on a bulldozer in Berkhamsted and doing these sorts of kind of things. But Scarlett, they're not necessarily going to come over to Labour, are they? I mean, no, I mean, I, th I, th I think that we have to remember that, that, as Robert said, the 2019 elections, which is where we're coming from, the 2019 local elections, were less of a disaster for the Tories. They did actually very well. Mm. They, I mean, were a total disaster because uh, Theresa May went straight afterwards, right? They were, they were so awful. So actually, they're not going to do that badly. Labour isn't going to do that well. But what's I mean, that saying about Labour? No, because, because, because the, I'm just saying that because it's been a pretty disastrous period for the Tories, right? You know, the trust era blowing up in the Conservatives' faces, the fall of Boris Johnson, Partygate. You've got to look at Labour and say, well, why aren't they doing better? No, no of course they're going to do. I mean, of course they're going to win. They're, they're, prob they're probably going to get Swindon, they're going to get Plymouth, they're going to get some some uh, thing, but but they're not going to wipe the board because actually the t the Tories were at an all time low, right? Okay. That's, no, that's that, just that, not that's... true. The Labour Party in 2019, Scarlett, and you cited 2019 as the case. Oppositions win council elections. In 2019, the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn actually managed to lose seats. I know the first time that a. a, a opposition, major opposition party. They should have won hundreds in 2019 and failed to do so. So they're starting, it was the Lib Dems and the Greens and the Independents who did well in 2019. Well, look, they're in a much better position yeah. now that Corbyn's nothing, nowhere yeah, no, near I, mean, I, I, I was going to say, we did have Corbyn as the leader. <laughs> yes. There was a real problem. Yes. Um, and, and by 2019, whereas in 2017 people thought, oh, maybe he's not that bad and, and mm. Theresa May did badly. By 2019, um, uh, chickens had come home to roost. It was it was it was all abominable. But what I'm saying is that this this isn't going to be a complete. Uh, it, it isn't going to be Labour gaining, gaining, gaining. Of course, they're looking to to win. Uh, they're looking that by the end they'll probably have a hundred councils that they're yeah. running. But actually, I mean, what's quite important? I mean, what I feel really strongly about these elections is local elections always have low low voter turnout. Yeah. And what have we now got now? We've got these new ID rules, which is going to actually suppress turnout, right? I mean, it is... Well, but I reckon you're in favour of ID rules. <laughs> I mean, there's been concerns about fiddling of votes, hasn't there? And people there's turning been, up... There's at... been one prosecution. This is, this is a problem that isn't there. What we want is we want to encourage people But weren't there students vote? with polling cars in their university towns and then they were going home and voting twice? And they, well, I don't know. That well, was they the can suggestion. still do that. Robert? Well, it... Voter ID, it, the police have failed to investigate. And when I served on a select committee with Labour members and Lib Dem members, one of the complaints that we all made was that police failed to investigate complaints of 
access registration and the like. And as for students, students are the group of the population who are so used to carrying ID cards mm. because when they go to pubs and clubs, late night venues, mm. they have to produce them. Yes. And it's, you talk to well, Rocco Forti and his colleagues and they spend Monday morning giving these cards back okay. because the IDs well, been look, left. Look, so, I mean, to be fair, we could have another debate on another could, day about yeah, ID cards. I, that's, in general, I mean, how important are the local elections when it comes to the bigger political picture? Because you're talking about low turnout. Often people are thinking about their bins and their roads when they're voting locally, and they're thinking completely differently when it comes to who they want to be the next Prime Minister, right? It's a, it's a bit of both, isn't it? I mean, certainly in 2019, what we gathered was, was two things. Theresa May was unpopular, and so was Jeremy Corbyn. Yes. And, and both of that, well, Theresa May le left, and Jeremy Corbyn went on to stunningly lose an, lose an election. So actually, they do, they're both a, a bellwether that if, if Labour doesn't manage to win quite a few councils, there is a problem. Mm. But also, on a local level, yes, you think, you think oh, I, I, I'm going to vote for this councillor because I like them, mm. or because yeah. they've done something. I mean, but when the, you say what, there would be a problem, Scarlett, and what do you mean? There's a problem with Keir Starmer. They have to start looking at the top and going, well, why aren't you, you know, you're clearly no Blair. It's not happening. But I, I think that the, the, all the polls show that it's going to be fine, right? Okay. I, I mean, what I'm but saying... Fine, but not good. Robert, I mean... That's the interesting point. With the Labour Party at, according to the opinion polls, somewhere between 41 and 45 percent in the polls, they should be achieving what Tony Blair did in 95, 96, in the run-up to the 97 election. What we're hearing from Scarlett is preparing the ground that they're going to be nowhere near that sort of figure mm. um, and they should be literally wiping the floor with the Tories and they're not going to. And therefore, the Tories will face questions because they're going to lose a lot of seats because they, didn't, they, lose, they lost a lot in 2019, but not as many as expected. But the Labour Party may well have to find uh, explanations as to why they haven't taken the seats that they should do when they're in opposition Scarlet? in these circumstances. Well, we, sh we, we shall see, right? All I'm saying is we're not going into it saying this is wonderful. But remember the last set of elections, I mean, Labour won Westminster and Wandsworth, which have been Tory forever. Yes. Mm. I mean, they are getting... But you cannot have, um, you know, Boris Johnson... Uh, whether people think he should have gone or not, I, I mean, was by the time the last elections came a disaster. And then you had Liz Truss, which opened up this mm. ridiculous. I mean, had there been a general election in October, I mean, there would have barely been a Tory seat. So, of course, what's happening is that Rishi Sunak quite is back so that we we have actually sort of we're back to, to grown up politics, right, where we have a we do have a gap. Uh, and, and quite a big gap, but not an absolutely mm. massive one. But then where the, the, the be... kind of uh, the opposite view to that, I get that it's grown up politics on both sides. But then you're talking about a low voter turnout. Maybe in the more macro picture, people are just a bit met and fed up of politics, Robert. And both the, the two different leaders don't look that different, and they're both quite boring. And why should we bother? <laughs> Sorry to well, be negative, yeah. but that, that seems to be the thinking in both parties but that I, you're worried about people being completely apathetic, actually. There is that risk, and it is a depressing fact that for local government elections, people don't turn out and vote. And tragically, in the vast majority of circumstances, they actually vote according to their national opinion rather than their local yes. opinion and that's a great shame it might be because they things. should judge the local councils there's no question about yeah. it but we are as Scarlett said heading into uh, a more balanced uh, managerial competent approach to government yeah. and it will be national equivalent vote day after two days after the local elections will indicate how the two parties, the big parties, All right, well, have we'll done. Get, we'll have to leave it there, but we'll get a good indication. Um, Scarlett Maguire well, and Robert Hayward, thank you very much for joining me. We should say, go out and vote. If you've got one of these elections coming up, vote. Do your duty.